dispositions. It was published, and that is when the roof fell in. After two days, McLeod yanked the column and wrote a stinging personal attack, promising that my days at CFP were finished. Now, I don't think all of you have probably read the column or her attack. I hope not. Have you? No? Oh, okay, I'll read you the column. I entitled it Throwing Bad Policy After Bad Policy, and kind of a play on throwing good money after bad money. And the original bad policy was Davis, and the second one was Anatoly. I start off with a question. What do these things have in common? The Earth is but 6,000 years old, and Noah took pairs of dinosaurs on board the ark along with other animals. God is punishing the United Kingdom with floods because Britons tolerate homosexuality. God punished the United States the same way for the same reason through Hurricane Katrina. God commands you to kill your children if they talk back to you. God commands you to kill unbelievers. The Catholic Church is the one true church. If you're a rational person, you would have to say that the commonality in all these religious contentions is that they are simply rubbish. Yet more than 30 million Americans who call themselves evangelical Christians buy into the 6,000-year-old earth belief and teach this to their children. Rent the HBO-produced video, You Have a Friend in God, to see this in action. The British Anglican bishops, who apparently have greater insight into the mind of God, recently revealed the true reason for floods. However, they failed to explain God's promise to Noah not to use floods again whenever he decided the human herd needed culling. And with respect to Katrina, we all remember the exhortations of the late Reverend Jerry Falwell on this subject. Deuteronomy, the fifth book of Moses, and lest we forget the Holy Word of God, informs Jews of proper child-rearing techniques, beating and killing. Apparently, given the three millennia survival of Judaism, Jews thought God was just kidding or simply didn't understand teenagers, and decided to skip over that chapter and opt for common sense. Unfortunately, we have become all too familiar with that other book of divinely inspired homicide, the Koran, and its prescription for the disposition of unbelievers. Finally, Pope Benedict, as unbiased an observer of religiosity as one could find, recently ticked off the world's Protestants by reasserting the primacy of the Catholic Church. That last one is a bit more thorny than the others because each of the faiths and all of their sects claim to be the one true religion, and they can't all be right. Generally, we consider religion to be a private matter, and in their homes or in their confines of their churches, mosques, tabernacles, gospel halls, kingdom halls, synagogues, and temples, if these religious folks want to cling to these strange beliefs, who cares? It is only when they spill into the outside world through attempts at censorship and outright murder that we start to ask ourselves, do we really need pay such deference to religions as we seem to? I raise this in the context of the unwise election platform of the Ontario Progressive Conservative Party. Its leader, John Tory, claims that by funding faith-based schools, we will be inviting into the mainstream some 53,000 students now being privately taught in the belief, beliefs of their faiths. He makes it sound as if Ontario's public policy has excluded them. They've always been welcome in the public school system, and they are outside of it because their parents decided to separate them so that they will not be contaminated by the teaching of other knowledge that does not square with the holy books. Try squaring the book of Darwin with the book of Genesis. What Tory does not highlight is the thousands of additional students whose parents will place them in faith-based schools once public funding becomes available. It's not just 53,000 students. Tory recently announced his intention of hiring former Premier Bill Davis to study the implications of funding faith-based schools. Some have condemned this move, pointing out that Davis is the person responsible for getting us into this problem by providing full funding for a Catholic school system. It has been likened to hiring the fox to reorganize the chickens. I hope Davis never gets the appointment because the PCs deserve to lose the election on this issue. And I'm pleased to see, since I've returned from my latest trip to the United States, that McGinty's picking up the uh, phone and using it. However, I would hope if it does come to pass, Davis will have had sufficient time to reflect on the damage he inflicted in Ontario, that he will have the courage to face the fact he did the wrong thing, and the fortitude to correct his mistake by recommending one public system uncontaminated by any particular religious dogma. Davis used to say puckishly that he was just a beaten in law school. Some of his eyes, as a matter of fact. student is left wondering why Davis and now Tory did not or do not try to square the book of education with the book of religion. Education is all about opening young minds to the possibilities and the wonders of knowledge yet to be discovered. Religion is dedicated to closing off such inquiry and shunning new knowledge that conflicts with religious convention. 
Why should the public be asked to fund the closing of young mines? Why would that be in the public interest? As I said, I'd appear for about two days, taken off her site, and this is what uh, we get. Um, she's labeled it an anti-Christian rant, and the title is Christian Bashing in the Canada Free Press by Judy McLeod. Anybody who happened upon Gary Reed's latest column on Canada Free Press last night or early this morning could have arrived at the conclusion that CFP is now into Christian bashing. It all started and ended with Gary Reed's column throwing bad policy after bad policy. A headline as benign sounding as it is boring. And then she quotes me, and I won't repeat it. Uh, it took Reed the proverbial nanosecond to herd all Christians into the same big tent as their church leaders. Well, no, I've spent a little more time than a nanosecond thinking about these issues. And uh, regarding church leaders, she's a Catholic. There's somebody called the Pope who's infallible and tells them what to do. And I think evangelicals elect their leaders. So I'm, I'm guessing the leaders are, you know, they're not all that different from the others. Uh, then she goes on with something right out of left field. Conventional wisdom from the lib left. And this is where I get into the ideologue stuff. Conventional wisdom from the lib left is that President George W. Bush is responsible for the ravages of Hurricane Katrina. Then she quotes me again, and then, the truth is that Reed's column should never have made it to CFP online. How it did make it there is the fault of yours truly. It was an error that happened as I was learning to post CFP online. <laughs> uh, she's been online as a newspaper for, I don't know, three, four years. I don't know. <laughs> And this, is, this one is the one that really uh, caught my attention. The Reed column is the only one ever posted to, CF, to the CFP website that made me ashamed. Now, uh, given some of the dribble that's on that site, uh, but I, I'm not, you know, when I first read it, I thought, ashamed of what? I mean, ashamed of my column or ashamed of the fact that she published it? It doesn't, doesn't make that clear anyway. But then she goes on to say, the reason for that is because the piece is out and out Christian bashing by a columnist who more appropriately belongs to the left-wing publishing world, where it is now fashionable to bash Christians. Mountains have been moved, seas have been parted, poetry has been written, artists have inspired, <laughs> sick, and people have climbed out of sick beds thanks to the believer. Reed would undoubtedly blame personal reasons for me taking offense to his anti-Christian rant. Well, yes. It is true that I'm a practicing Catholic who will end her days as one, but that's infinitesimal in comparison to the increasing persecution of Christians worldwide. <laughs> Christians are being tortured and murdered all for their beliefs. Yet the on, the on the increased persecution of Christians finds little attention in the mainstream media. Even though Reed and I have known each other for years, and he apparently rates me as a dinosaur, along with all the other Christians, I do not know what his religious beliefs are. Never asked me, I would have told him. <laughs> but it is not the fate of Gary Reed's immortal soul that troubles me. <laughs> uh, I, that, that really hurts. It, it is that he would see CFP as the place to bash persecuted Christians. Well, I don't think the Pope's persecuted. No, I, I don't think the leaders of the evangelical are really persecuted. So I'm not sure who these persecuted Christians are. She thinks that I'm uh, bashing. But to my way of thinking, bashing Christians in the harsh reality of their persecution is tantamount to bully. So now I'm a bully. For every Christian who expects better of CFP, please accept my sincere and abject apology. Meanwhile, God bless the dinosaur believer.